The Miles Thompson Home and History There is probably nothing more fun for an amateur historian than sifting through century-old newspaper files. Though it is unlikely everyone's proverbial cup of tea, sometimes a person finds things that are rather amusing. In this instance, Twerent, especially the subject of this photograph of Vermilionite Miles M. Thompson soaking his dogs in a wooden bucket labeled chocolates that strikes the funny bone. Though it does, it was the notification of his demise that was published in the local newspaper on March 21, 1901. It read, Mr. Miles Thompson dropped dead Tuesday at his home. Whilst the use of the term, dropped dead, in a formal death notice in a newspaper seems a bit tacky, not to mention extremely wacky. It was more commonplace than you or I might think, way back when. But no matter how it was put Mr. Thompson was dead. And that was that, or that would be, that, except for the fact that Miles Thompson was part of one of the most illustrious families that ever walked the wooden streets of Vermilion Village. When America was young there were three brothers, Justice, Charles, and Henry Thompson. Charles was a clerk in the Continental Congress and signed the Articles of Confederation as a Connecticut representative. His brother Henry was a delegate to that body, and the third, Justice, was a Revolutionary War soldier. In 1808 Justice, along with his wife and four sons, migrated to the area from Connecticut settling along the Edison Highway just two miles west of Florence, Jessup, southwest of town, at a place called, Tater's Corners. Horace, one of the four sons, married a gal named Mary Nicholas whose family also came to the area during the early 19th century. They first settled along the lake shore on a portion of land that would later become Shaddix, Shaddix Grove, then Crystal Beach Park, currently occupied by the Crystal Shore apartment buildings. They would later buy another piece of land and build a home on the spot where, eventually, F.W. Wakefield constructed his beautiful, Harborview, mansion early in the 20th century. Most recently the site was the home of the Great Lakes Historical Society's Maritime Museum. Two of Horace and Mary's sons, Miles and Henry, were very active in the civic affairs of the fledgling village of Vermilion. Miles became town marshal and curator of the town lockup, and Henry became Vermilion Township and Corporation Clerk. Aside from being town marshal for a time Miles worked, as did his father, as a ship's carpenter. At the time the attending portrait was made he was living in a home on Huron Street with his youngest daughter Cora. His wife, Julia, had passed on some 30 years earlier. He was only 70 years old. Less than a year later he, as the newspaper put it, dropped dead. And folks today or in that yesteryear would be hard-pressed to know whether to chuckle or cringe when reading of his passage. Perhaps it's been a little of both. God rest his soul.